back to work on this magnificent machine. We had uh, quite a bit of rain. It was a bad deal. I got uh, a lake there in the car. So, yep, got some water in there. Uh, I got a seat that is completely drenched and looks pretty dry back here. Uh, I've got a pretty big gap here. I'm gonna put a, uh, I'll put a 3 16 inch plate down here. Um, but today, what I would like to accomplish is to get the rear down tubes that go from here and they're gonna go down to there. Uh, get those in, and then uh, hopefully I can get the, the harness or crossbars. We're gonna put an X brace across here from there, going down to there. And from up there to down to there. So the diagonals on this main hoop. So I measured the distance from up here to down there. Uh, it's about 36 inches, um, but you gotta remember where I'm gonna notch this up here. So I actually need a little bit more than 36 inches. And then what I'd really like to do down here, move the sticker here, is actually put that, land that bar so it's on these three planes right here. Um, that's a pretty complicated cut to get it to fit. Uh, so I want to make the bar a little bit longer. If I screw up, I can always just land the bar right here. And again, I plan on, I like to put the bar on the corner here, but if I screw up and need to make it shorter, I can bring it up here. The next thing I want to do here is I want to try to rough this in. So I'm going to put the bar down about where it goes, right, right about in there. What I'm going to do with this here like this, I don't want to cut this. I'm not making a permanent cut. I'm not doing anything uh, right, right to the exact measurements. I'm just going to be eyeballing it and I'm just going to kind of rough this in right now. So I would like to get this bar on these three planes right now. I know I need to cut this. I'm just gonna draw a line, just kind of eyeball it. Probably about like that. And I'm looking at this. I can't, I gotta be real careful here. See if I can show you this. So I'm I'm right up against this, this bump out here. So I could cut that off, um, which maybe I'll do eventually. Um, I could actually weld the bar to that. If I move the bar over just a little bit or tube over just a little bit, I can actually weld it to that for more bracing uh, on this wheel well. Uh, so I'm going to kind of leave it right there for right now. I don't want to go over too far um, because I don't want to get run into interference with some of the other... I don't want to run into interference with some of the other chassis parts here. So, so here is my first attempt at doing a rough cut on this bar and you can see it is close but uh, definitely no cigar so the first cut i made with the cutoff wheel the second cut i made with the with the angle grinder with a with the uh, cutoff wheel on it so it's it's a lot closer still got to do some trimming but it's getting real close although you look over on this side and it's way bad so i'll have to address that Okay, so we've got it really close now. It's really tight all the way around. That's actually probably close enough to weld. Um, you can see you got a little bit of a gap down at the bottom on the inside. Um, from, from here on out, I'd probably use a flap wheel to fit this, but my next step is gonna be to try and fit this, because when I fit this side here, this angle's gonna change a little bit. So I know I'm gonna need to dial this in a little bit more. So the next step's gonna be to mark this cut it and put a notch in there and leave it a little bit long so I have again have a little bit of room to play with. So using my har my Harbor Freight notching tool uh, I notched this at first at five degrees and tried it and that wasn't quite enough I had a see I had a big gap I had a big gap up here so I ended up cutting it at 15 degrees cut a little bit more out of there and it actually fits pretty tight now. Just need to take a flap wheel really and uh, chamfer the edge here so we get a good good weld. And down here, 
it's still pretty pretty tight i think uh there's a little bit of a gap in here if i'm gonna mig weld it which is probably what i'm gonna do just for the sake of time i think that's gonna be a, a good tight fit there If you haven't seen a tubing notcher before, this is the one I'm using. This is the Harbor Freight one. Pipe goes in here. You got to get a hole saw from a hardware store. It just screws right on the end here. Then you got to drill. And that's that's about it. It's not, not too hard to use. You just want to make sure um, you use lots of WD-40, cutting oil, some kind of some kind of lubricant when you're using this. And you usually want to hold on to this drill with both hands. Oh, great. So this just happened. Some carnage. You can't really, uh, I've had this drill for years. Um, guess I'll be getting another drill before I can complete this. All right, so uh, I've got this about where I want it. That's about where I want it. So there's the angle bar. I just got to run, uh, we'll run a short piece across there, a short piece down to there. And then uh, the crossbar in the front here on the main hoop will be done. I got the one bar cut up and done, and I'll show you how I made a, a copy of it. Now, this can't be an exact copy. It's got to be a mirror image. So there's the first bar I did, notched on both sides. What I did was I made a pattern. I took some poster board, wrapped it around the bar, started here, starts here wrap it around the bar which is hard to do with with one hand i couldn't i couldn't really record this it's hard to do with one hand but then i just took a sharpie marked the paper cut it out uh, i also made a line on here so i had a, i had the top of the bar marked with a line i marked the bottom of the paper i did the same exact same thing on the other side then all i have to do is take this paper take the two patterns i made and the other bar i have and all I have to do then is originally it went around this way, it was around this way. All I got to do is flip it over, put it on the bar this way and wrap it around, trace the top, the top and the bottom. So I have that marked. And then I just want to make sure you can see there's a, I got a distance here, 25, 25 and three quarter. So I got that's the distance between this line and this line here. So I just got to make sure I got 25 and three quarter between this line and this line on the other bar. So now I know the length should be the same. I wrap this around. I can trace the top of this and I have the mark of where to cut this off. I also have the mark of this off. You just got, you got to remember, yeah, I wrapped it around this side this way first. So that was on the first one. You have to flip it over and wrap it around the exact opposite way to get a mirror image. So this was up on the original copy. This is up on the copy that I'm making. So I cut the end of the second pipe out. I traced it out, cut it out. I just used a cutoff wheel and an angle grinder, cut it out by hand. You can see it's not exactly perfect, but it's pretty close. Same with back here. They line up pretty good, so we'll see how these fit in. And I should be able to weld these in. Welcome to roll cage building. So when I did this pipe, it ended up I ended up uh, making this bend here a little more than I wanted, and this one here uh, a little less than I should have. So I ended up with a little bit a little bit short, about seven eight short on the bottom. So I want to make up for some of that by putting another three sixteenths inch plate down here, uh, which is going to raise this up a little bit. And it's gonna help. It's gonna help take some of this gap away here. Although um, the more gap you have here, the easier it is to, to weld up these other bars. Uh, but I was, I was trying to get rid of all that. But I'll live with it. It'll be all right. We're just uh, making this up as we go along. So I'm gonna weld these plates in. I'll, I'll tack these plates in. I'm gonna tack the down, the down tubes in here on either side. Then I can start working on the crossbar. The the X brace from the top corner here down to here. And the next thing is I got to do something about this roof today and I have no sheet metal. I have nothing. I have no idea what I'm going to do here. 
but with this roll bar in I don't think the uh, sunroof can fit back in there but I might try to cram it in there I don't know we'll see so normally at this point with everything tacked in oh there's some smoke that smells like some kind of plastic something burning Hopefully, I would uh, want to measure this across these two bars here to see how level we are I'd be checking this bar here to see how level it is I'd be checking this bar here to see how square it is but normally I'm working on a concrete pad that's already level and the car has been leveled out I don't have that luxury here so all you can really do is kind of eyeball it I think it's uh, pretty close and I'm gonna call it good right now you focus on that all right so one of the great things about having a sunroof and, and being in a place where it rains a lot and pulling a sunroof out is this like the Jeep this car collects rainwater so the nice thing is I've been cutting and cutting and bending parts while cutting and grinding on parts so the nice thing is I can cut grind parts and just throw them right in here on the carpet on the floor to cool them off in the water uh, I'm a little bit concerned I've got a race in a couple days and a seat is absolutely soaked though I might have a wet butt and there's a bunch of water in the cup holders too so I'm about to cut the first X brace inside the car and I've got a line down here you can't really see it Let's see if I can maybe zoom in on it nope I guess not there's a there's a line on the side of the pipe right here and what I did is I tried to make that line about parallel with the center line of this I'm gonna cut it uh, it's probably gonna be a little rough and a little bit hopefully a little bit long um, but this bar originally I had it planned on going in one place after I put the rear down tubes in, the place where I had planned on doing it's not going to work. Um, then uh, I was, I originally had this part here in the vise, uh, but because the length of this tube was actually hitting the ground, the vise is too low. So I had to uh, reposition it. So it may not be meant to go that way, but it'll work and it will cut the way I want. So the first cut I did was at 35 degrees. I'm going to do a little bit at 38. It doesn't quite, it's not quite parallel. The line is not quite parallel to the cut. So I'm going to cut just a little bit more and see how that works out and start to see some of the advantages of some of the lines going on here i got this line here it's about in the center of this tube i got this line here which is where our bend mark is so i should be able to measure between that and i should be able to transfer that to the other side now i just like to start start on the one and then just subtract an inch so that is about this is really fun to do with one hand so that's about three inches right there okay so I just transferred the line over to the other side three inches and yeah the Sun's kind of in the way so three inches and then that's where I need to make a notch I need to go from here down to the center of this bar so I got this approximately set up where I want it right down the side there in the middle mark so now I can take some measurements cut the pipe start notching it now that we're getting close to the bzzz, welder up phase I'm not really uh, overly enthused about the gap down here it's about the same on both sides Ooh, that's hot it's about the same on both sides um, but I would like to get that uh, a lot closer so what I'm gonna do is take my angle grinder and cutoff wheel and just kind of just sneak it in here a little bit and try to keep this level just cut it off on both sides I can wedge the whole the whole roll bar just wedge it down a little bit um, it'll open up this gap at the top a little more but um, it'll be a lot better fit down here and it'll be a lot easier to weld up so this is the mess this is the mess I got going on right now so I'm gonna clean a lot of this out and then I gotta weld this I'm gonna weld this bar up as much as I can we are almost there just got to suck uh, the lake out of the front seat here we got the lake out of the back seat a few episodes ago all right the cage is in we're putting strapping the seats back in I still got a bit of a mess to clean up in here well there's my pretty poor miserable welds uh, I think they'll be all right hopefully they pass tech well, I hope this series that we've done on doing the roll cage build in the Celic has been helpful I mean for making uh, the main mounting plates, making templates, cutting them, um, taking, making sure we got measurements, lots of measuring different devices, and then all the way up to building the, the templates we made, uh, building templates that we've used to actually take measurements and make a plan for the main hoop. Uh, the only thing I would have 
wished I would have done was put a mark, use the straight edge, put a mark down the center of the tube, and then uh, marked one inch increments. Actually, I would have started right, I would have started right up here at the top, made one inch increment marks down here. Um, that makes planning the distance between the angles a lot easier rather than doing guesswork. Um, that would also help with uh, finding angles. So can't forget this either. This has been uh, real helpful in trying to guesstimate or figure out what angles to bend stuff at. And of course the tape measure. So these are just some of the basic tools. The principles that were used to, to build this main hoop and the roll cage. The same principles can be applied to building two bumpers, building custom suspension, building subframes. A lot of the principles just apply to whatever you want to apply them to. The only limit is really your imagination. So now you know more than I do because you know everything I do, plus you know what you knew before watching the video. So take care of yourself, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.